Today's video is brought to you by Candid. Hey, brother! Okay, so remember in Chamber of Secrets when Harry is fighting the Basilisk? Or should I say when Fox is fighting the Basilisk and Harry's hiding under a hat and miraculously pulls out a sword? You're actually, this is Mr. Bob, not Fox. Yes, I know Bob and Fox don't look at all the same, but like, you get it. And with the sword in hand, he decides to take the Basilisk head on. He ducks and dives a few blows before both he and the Basilisk finally strike true. Harry sends the sword directly through the roof of its mouth into its brain and kills it instantly. And the Basilisk lands one of his razor sharp venomous fangs into Harry's arm, killing him just real slow. And that is where I want to pause. Let's look at this. Basilisk fang, clearly in arm, very sharp, very deadly, much danger. And not just to Harry, but also to the little bit of Voldemort's soul living inside Harry. Because Harry, much like the diary he destroys just moments later with the same thing, is a horcrux. And yet, for some reason, when the fang comes into contact with the diary, the horcrux is destroyed. But when it comes into contact with Harry, it survives. Why does one horcrux survive, but the other doesn't? Guys, before we dive on in, I want to give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Candid. If you are unhappy with your smile or just feel self-conscious when you see yourself in photos, Candid might be the option for you. Candid makes clear aligners that get your teeth straight fast. And because they're totally invisible, you can straighten your teeth without anyone even realizing you're hard at work. It's kind of like how I personally keep in good running shape by jogging while recording all of these videos. Like, you probably can't tell right now, but I'm mid-light jog. Seriously though, Candid is a great way to feel better about your smile and you can do it all without ever having to step foot in a doctor's office. If you'd like to check it out, you can get $75 off of your order by heading over to candidco.com slash SCB. Again, that is candidco.com slash SCB for $75 off of your order. Link is in the description down below. In case anyone needs a refresher on Horcruxes, they are the process of splitting one's soul by murder and some other process, JK Rowling refuses to tell us, and placing one part of your soul into a new vessel, thus making you sort of immortal because now if your regular body dies, your soul is still tethered to the mortal realm. Voldemort, in his pursuit of immortality, pushes this idea to the max by creating seven Horcruxes, although one of them was was an accident, but more on that in a moment. Plus, he still has the original bit of soul in his main body for a total of, if my math is correct here, nine pieces of soul. And each bit of soul became a Horcrux in a variety of different containers, but some with considerable more significance than others. At the end of the day, we have Tom Riddle's diary, the Peveril ring, Slytherin's locket, Hufflepuff's cup, Ravenclaw's diadem, Nagini, and Harry. Also, fun fact, I find it kind of fascinating that even though Harry is the one hunting all of them down, he ultimately only destroys one, and that's the diary, and he does it before he even knows what a Horcrux is. Although I guess, to be fair, he does finish off the man himself after the rest of them have been destroyed, so that's pretty good. But otherwise, Dumbledore gets the ring, Ron gets the locket, Hermione gets the cup, Crab gets the diadem, and Nagini gets her head chopped off by Neville. I'm awesome! Which, if I'm being honest, has become a slightly more morbid scene now that we know that Nagini used to be a woman. How each Horcrux is destroyed, though, is what makes today's topic an interesting question, because destroying a Horcrux is no easy feat. Hermione tells us in Deathly Hallows that what Harry does to the diary is one of the more foolproof ways to destroy a Horcrux, but that it doesn't have to be a bad Basilisk thing. It has to be something so destructive that the Horcrux can't repair itself. Basilisk venom only has one antidote and it's incredibly rare. Phoenix tears, said Harry, nodding. And Harry is of course extremely aware of this antidote because it is how he survived in the Chamber of Secrets after Fox cried on his wound. You guys have like the weirdest power. Personally, I don't really have a problem with the facts that Fox is able to heal Harry, except that Tom Riddle is just like, oh yeah, I forgot. Like, come on, man. You might've ended the whole thing right there if you just been like, shoo, shoo, shoo. And you might be thinking, isn't that just the answer to our question? The Horcrux survives because 
Fox cries on Harry? And yes, to an extent that is correct. If Fox had not been there, the Venom would have killed Harry and the Horcrux would have been destroyed. But that is not the part that has created so much confusion over the years. The confusion comes from the nature in which all of the other Horcruxes are destroyed. So let's review how it all goes down. After stabbing the Basilisk with the Sword of Gryffindor, the sword becomes impregnated with Basilisk Venom, at which point it can then be used to destroy the other Horcruxes. This is because the sword is goblin made, meaning that it is able to imbue that which makes it stronger, something that never really super made much sense to me because like everything else the Basilisk Venom touches, it's like, no, that, that killed it, but the sword is like, uh-uh, not me, plus a thousand poison damage, let's go! And go it does. It is then used to destroy the ring, the locket, and the guinea, all of which are destroyed the moment they are stabbed by the sword and exposed to the Basilisk Venom. If you cut yourself with the Sword of Gryffindor, would you die basically immediately? Yeah, I think so. Not, maybe not immediately. I mean, Harry was stabbed with the live snake, but like, you're going down. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have a bob. No, you don't. The same is also true of the diary and the cup, which are destroyed by being stabbed with a basilisk fang and go down pretty immediately. So I think where the confusion comes in is that Harry, who is also a Horcrux, gets stabbed with a live basilisk fang and is somehow still able to stagger around for a few minutes until Fox is able to come over and cry on him. But even with Fox, it would almost seem like the Horcrux part of him, the bit of Voldemort's soul, should have been incinerated the moment he was stabbed with the Basilisk Fang, right? And I've seen the argument before that this is just a complete mistake, that J.K. Rowling didn't quite have the whole Horcrux thing planned out yet when she was writing Chamber of Secrets, and that the diary was then included retroactively as one of the Horcruxes so that Harry could have already knocked one out. After all, compared to all the other items which go on to become Horcruxes, which are all like actual treasure and a snake, the diary is pretty plain. It's not even a magical diary to begin with. It's a regular muggle diary purchased from a muggle shop on Vauxhall Road. Nor is it even heavily protected like the rest of them. Lucius Malfoy just has it. And I mean, come on, how freaking convenient is it for Harry that in one fell swoop, he destroys a Horcrux, kills a Basilisk, and creates a Horcrux destroying weapon at the same time. All of which happens just moments after Fox himself miraculously shows up to blind the creature that kills with its eyes and give him a sword. Chamber of Secrets, more like Chamber of Super Duper Awesome Good Time to Luck, am I right? Probably wouldn't look as nice on the cover of a book. But no, lack of planning is not the answer to this question. I mean, for one, if she didn't want the diary to be a horcrux, she could have just had Voldemort make six horcruxes and Harry be the secret seventh one. Beyond that, maybe not every little detail, but the gist of the whole story was definitely planned from the start, which is painfully obvious if you've ever looked through this History of Magic book where you can see early drawings of the castle, choices for the defense against the dark art position, and chapter by chapter character plot summaries for any given book. But either way, out of universe reasons are not needed to explain why the Horcrux inside Harry wasn't destroyed because we have a perfectly good one in universe. In Deathly Hallows, Hermione tells us, look, if I picked up a sword right now, Ron, and ran you through with it, I wouldn't damage your soul at all. But it's the other way around with the Horcrux. The fragment of soul inside it depends on its container, its enchanted body for survival. It can't exist without it. So the real difference between Harry and the other Horcruxes is that Harry is alive. The other containers at the end of the day are just objects, and once they're exposed to the deadly basilisk venom, their integrity is compromised, they can't repair themselves, and they are destroyed. And since the soul inside them depends on the container, it too dies. Harry, on the other hand, is a human, and as such, it takes a few minutes for the venom to completely enter his bloodstream, infect his entire body, and kill him. If it had killed him, then yes, the Horcrux itself would have been destroyed because its container, Harry, 
would be dead. This is also why the Horcrux inside of Harry is destroyed when Voldemort attacks him in the forest, because he actually dies. Harry is able to survive this though, because when Voldemort resurrected himself in Goblet of Fire, he used Harry's blood in the potion, and that blood contained the sacrificial charm his mother left on him when she died. So in an odd way, Harry had a much nicer sort of love-based Horcrux living inside of Voldemort. But that protection would only work if Voldemort was the one trying to kill Harry, which is why it was essential that he be the one to do it. And just to tie up any other little loose ends here, the diary isn't as well protected as the other Horcruxes because it is intended to be found and used as a weapon. That's why Lucius Malfoy just has it. And if you're wondering about Nagini, who was also a living Horcrux, she dies instantly because her head gets chopped off. And that'll pretty much just do it. I'm awesome! Guys, from our question of the day, if you have any other things in the Harry Potter universe you'd like for us to explain, let us know in the towel section down below. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see if Salazar Slytherin is actually still alive, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see how the Philosopher's Stone was used to create Credence, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next time, I'll see you in another life, brother.